Welcome back to Iron Completionist, the series where I'm aiming to fill the collection log into all of the completable, non-repeatable content in RuneScape. Last time we did a little bit of prep work for this episode, which is definitely going to be needed, as this is the biggest completionist-focused episode that I have ever recorded, and you guys are in for a real treat. As you can guess, this video took a long time to produce, and is the product of thousands of hours invested into this series thus far, so make sure you drop a like, and subscribe to the channel to not miss any future content. If you want to go the extra mile and support even further, you can consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button down below. The grinds in the video you're about to see were insanely sweaty, so in order to wash off that grime and grease, I make sure to grab a bar of Mr. 1920 Soap, the sponsor of today's video. Now, I have worked with this company for a long time and have actually personally exclusively used Mr. 1920 Soap for about two years, and every single bar that I've used smells fantastic. It leaves my skin feeling smooth and fresh, and the best part is that it's all natural, so it doesn't have any of the nasty and harmful chemicals that big soap companies use. Now, I always thought the product was amazing, but Mr. 1920 strives for perfection and said, it's not good enough. They went through all their scents and made them even better, they made their packaging look honestly absolutely gorgeous, and they added plenty of new varieties to choose from. Now my personal favorites are Cool Water and Bourbon Barrel, trust me, get those ones for yourself, they are just really nice. There's also a woman's line, and fellas, I know that you consist of 99.5% of my audience here, Christmas is coming up, and this is a great present to get for that special lady. I know lots of us struggle with gift giving, but trust me, this one's a winner. So if you guys want to ditch the plastics and return to the classics, check out Mr. 1920 using the link in the description below, and make sure to use code SOUL at checkout for 15% off your order. You see this animation right here? Yeah, get used to seeing that because that's going to be what the majority of this episode is all about. Making money. For the past several months, you guys have heard me mention in episodes that we need to be continuing to make GP for this reason right here. We need to buy bank slots. There are four more purchasable bank slots left, totaling 850 million GP that I need for this. Now, while I truly doubt that I have 850 million GP in alkables in the bank right now, we'll get there eventually. But I've been doing a lot of revs lately, which leads to my alkable tab looking pretty nice. And you might be thinking, well, that's not that much money, who cares? Well, down here we also have 3,300 onyx bolt tips, and a few things that I need to process, like about 3,500-ish rune ore. I probably won't be making the adamant and mithril if we're being honest, but I do have a couple thousand bars that I can use. And about 13,000 battle staves. You know, casual 13,000. If I really, really wanted to go all out, I of course have 158,000 gold bars, and as you can see, a plethora of jewelry. But I'm not really sure that's worth it, because like I mentioned before, things like revs do passively drop money, so... I probably won't go that hard on working through all of the craftable items in my bank, but I want to do the big ones. I mean, the battle staffs alone is about 100 million GP if I top these with some orbs. Step one to making all the battle staffs though is I need to actually make unpowered orbs. Luckily for me, I'm pretty sure I still have tons of seaweed just from cracking and random bossing, so I should also have an ass load of buckets of sand thanks to the RD Elite Diary. I don't have to go out of my way to get the resources, I just have to make the glass. This is what I would argue to be one of the biggest completionist things that is a one-time, completable, non-repeatable achievement in RuneScape, so it's been something I've had my eyes on since episode 1, and I really want to start making some progress on it. Believe it or not, this is actually the fast part of the process. Truthfully, I do not remember the last time I charged orbs, so I don't know how long that's going to take, but I'm going to go ahead and take a guess and assume it's going to be a while. I also don't plan on alking everything, I'm probably going to be utilizing shop selling for some of it, but we'll cover that when we get there. Well, there we go, I just finished blowing a bunch of glass, and if I can ever find where the heck these things ended up in my bank, I'd be able to tell you that I have about 13,000 unpowered orbs to go with my roughly 13,000 battle staves. Battle staffs? I don't know, you guys can tell me how to say that in the comments, but uh, now comes the hard part. I have to go charge all of these, and that's probably not going to be particularly fast. In fact, I think it's probably less than like a thousand per hour, and it's probably substantially less than that. Welcome to my home for the foreseeable future, the Air Obelisk in Seven Wilderness, banking an edge, and then running back. Now you can do this a little faster by manually casting on the altar, and there might be some death mechanics you can abuse, but I don't really know about them. But it's looking like charging all these orbs is going to take me about 25 hours, so I'll see you then. 
Well, the bright side of this is thanks to very, very helpful things like object marking, I can actually mark this gate from very, very far away and one click it from the beginning of the Edgeville dungeon. So I can save myself a little bit of time and this grind ends up being a little bit more AFKable on the runs there. So that's one nice thing. Still gonna take a while though. All right, I somehow managed to get lucky enough to get another Quizmaster random time for the stale baguette. Oh, okay, maybe one day. Well, about 30 hours later and I am finally done making all of these air orbs. That took a very long time. Admittedly, it was fairly AFK for large portions of it though. But we now have enough orbs to craft all of our battle staff, and uh, yeah, I guess I gotta start doing that now, which is probably gonna take another five or six hours. Like I said, please leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel because this is going to probably be the longest time to produce video in this entire series so far, and I don't even know how long the video is gonna end up being. Oh yeah, a little thing to mention, I tried taking off my glory every time I banked as well, so that I could burn a charge on as many glories as possible, so that I'd be able to potentially run these over to the Fountain of Rune and have a better chance of, you know, working towards that eternal glory, because you can't just uncharge these without manually using a charge on every single one, which is an extremely frustrating process, so I figured I'd try to knock it out a little bit passively. This is the last of the battle staff making that I will be doing, and our crafting XP has rocketed all the way up to 16.6 million. This actually took like, I don't know, maybe six or seven hours or something. I wasn't really keeping track. But uh, if we just look in the bank now, I have <laughs> nearly 14,000 air battle staff, uh, 600 fire, 400 earth as well. That's just, oh my lord. So this on its own is how much? That on its own is 128 million gold. Assuming I alk all of them, I'm probably going to end up doing some shop stuff because I'll lose a little bit of money, but I will save like 10 to 20 hours and a load of sanity. So I'm probably going to end up doing that, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. The next thing on the agenda, I'm sorry for the scuffed screen region, by the way. Next thing on the agenda is to tan all of these dragon hides, probably mostly from Vork, I would imagine, and then turn them all into dehyde bodies. So let's go ahead and get that done. Now the place I am actually doing this at is the Crafting Guild, it's on the second floor of the Crafting Guild, and I would argue most people probably don't use this, because if you have access to the Crafting Guild, why the heck are you here? But the Tanner doesn't normally just stand in one spot, in fact he can patrol the whole second floor of this building. The reason that he is staying right here and making this an incredibly fast method is because as you can see beneath me here, I have my main account talking to the NPC, and for some reason when you're engaged in dialogue, the NPC doesn't move. I'm not really sure if this is going to drastically speed things up, but it'll probably save me like one or two seconds per trip. And that one or two seconds over the course of thousands of trips, it's definitely going to make a pretty good impact on my time. I wish that I could change this to left click and tan all, but unfortunately that is not an option. I honestly don't remember the last time if I've ever tanned hides in bulk on this account before. Maybe like five or six years ago when the account was in its early stages before all the meta changes. But that took maybe three hours, so again, in case you guys have not noticed by now, it is time to make this massive plethora of leather into dehyde bodies for more alkables, which is going to take another handful of hours. Again, I don't know how long, I'll probably mention how long it was once I'm done with all of it. Alright, another numerous amount of hours later, and that is all of the dragon leather made into bodies. So if we take a look, we now have almost 3,000 green dehyde bodies, 2,500 blue, about 3,000 red, and close to 2,000 black dehyde bodies as well. This elk tab, man, it's starting to look pretty freaking dense, and I'm super excited to get to it, but there are two more things we have to do, one of them substantially faster than the other. And the first thing is just making all of these onyx bolt tips into onyx bolts. This one should really not take a particularly long amount of time. We already have the runite bolts in the bank. Over 3,000 onyx bolt tips, so this is probably, what, another, like, close to 30 mil GP once it's all alked? You never really realize how much all this stuff stacks up in your bank until you, you know, don't do anything with it for several years. But, uh, this is a lot more GP in here than I expected. Now, considering we're almost done making everything at this point, I don't think it's going to be enough for all of the bank slots. I'm guessing maybe the second to last one, and then the final one costs like 400 mil on its own or something, so I guess we'll see. Alright, well that's all of the bolts made, and another 28 million GP. 
Also, I realized I forgot to show this, but my crafting XP is nearing 18 million now after making all those dehyde bodies, which is pretty nuts. And there is one more thing on the list, which is making all this runite ore into runite bars. I could also do this with the adamant, and honestly, I'm pretty sure if I made all the adamant into bars as well, that's like another 100 mil if I make them all into plate bodies. But the idea of making 45,000 adamant bars at Blast Furnace sounds super miserable, especially considering I'm going to continue making gold passively throughout this challenge series, whatever you want to really call it. So going out of my way to do something that will technically in the long run end up being useless just doesn't really feel worth my time. I also have over 1,000 bracelets of Ethereum. I can't remember if I've mentioned that in this video or not yet, which is technically another 50 mil. But these can actually be broken down into Ether on their own if you dismantle them. And 250 Ether each might not seem like a lot, but considering I have, you know, over 1,000 of them, that's 250k Ether, which is more or less infinite uses of the wieldy weapons once I get them. So again, I think it just makes more sense for me to hold on to these just because they do have a secondary use and I'd be kicking myself if I end up running out of ether because I decided to alk these. And keeping with the trend of everything we've done so far this video, one of the last things done here, I have all of the runite bars smithed. So now I have like pretty close to 4,000 runite bars in the bank, which is gonna actually be a <laughs> lot of money. I guess let's go make all this stuff. I'm probably going to make the Myth Bars and Addy Bars into Plate Bodies. And the Runite Bars, I think I'm actually going to make into Plate Legs or Rune 2Hs. I'm pretty sure those are the most like efficient GP per bar. And this is why I got the Smith's Outfit. I have never actually gotten to use it before. And let's see how... Oh, that already feels weird. So everything Smith's one tick faster. So you can imagine over the course of thousands of trips, this is going to end up saving me probably over a couple of hours, I think, and it was collection log slots anyway. I'm making the plate bodies out of mithril and adamant bars just because it's time efficient. I could probably make a bit more money doing other stuff, but it doesn't seem worth it for anything other than rune. Well, and thank god for the smithing changes too, because I totally forgot this was a thing that you can now just hit spacebar just like every other skill when you're doing smithing. So I don't have to actually click the mithril plate body thing, I can just hit spacebar and it remembers the last thing that I made. I know it sounds really minor, but when you're smithing this many items, it's very convenient. No screen markers for me, aside from marking the anvil, because I'm dumb. There's the last of the mithril and adamant bars made, and now here's the fun part. The runite bars. I'm actually really, really looking forward to this, because every single thing I make here is like 36 or 37k or something. So I think we're going to go with two-handers. I'm pretty sure it's the same alc value as plate legs. I'll double check in a second here, but... Like, bam, 36k or something. It's 36 or 38, something like that, but... Yeah, 38k, actually. So, every single one of these is 38k. That is... Oh my god, it's nuts. Alright. It is time. I have finally finished, as far as I'm aware, all of the resources I plan on making right now. Of course, there's a couple more things I could do. I could make 45,000 adamant bars. That sounds incredibly unfun. And... I could <laughs> fletch 50,000 magic longbows, which sounds even less fun. So I don't think I'll be doing either of those things or making any of my jewelry into, you know, or any of my gems into jewelry to alk those. It's just, it's a lot of effort for, like I mentioned earlier, something that's pretty likely to continue being gained passively, which is GP. However, of course, if we go into our uh, alk tab, that's not our alk tab. If we go into our alk tab here, there are so many things. It's a lot. There is a lot in here, and there is one activity that I want to start with when alking these, and after that I might switch to just shop selling them because that's going to save me probably like 10 to 20 hours of alking. So there is one thing that I visited a very long time ago that you guys have seen in my intro reel, probably since episode 1 or very early, and that is the Brimhaven Agility Arena. It looks very nice. Oh, we're only missing one item. Ooh, a pirate's hook. How bad could that possibly be? Well, let me show you. So the pirate's hook is buyable over here from Jackie the Fruit, and it is 800 tickets. Well, that doesn't sound too terrible. 800 tickets, how bad could that possibly be? Well, at best, you can get 60, 66, since I'm maxed and have the Karamja Diaries done, per hour. 66. That's it. Now, I'm pretty sure I don't have to have the actual gloves on in order to gain the 10% chance of getting double tickets here, but I guess I'll probably find out pretty quickly if I do. 
And if you look at my inventory, you'll notice I only have a couple of the alkable items. And I'll explain why. The logic is pretty simple. You get more money, the less of an item you sell to a shop per world. So I am taking the items that I have a giant stack of, which is the Onyx Bolts and the Era Battle Staff, and I'm going to be alking those. The reason I have the high value items in here is because I guess it just, to me, made more sense to alk them rather than sell them to a shop. In hindsight, that doesn't really make any sense because I would have been getting the same amount of GP if I only sold one per world. But look, this is like 60, 70 hours into this grind already for this video, and I had just now begun doing the alking, so... This is one of those things I've been putting off for exactly this circumstance. There's really no reason not to be alking while I'm here because I can't make this go any faster. I can only get one ticket per minute. So there is so much downtime as you can see by this little timer. Even after getting here and alking along the way, I still have 30 seconds where I'm just standing around. And it's really negligible XP to keep going back and forth through these obstacles. So don't really see much point in doing it. I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask why I don't also do things like Castle Wars and Trouble Brewing, and the problem is you can't actually alk in a lot of minigames, so unfortunately those are ones I kind of just have to stand around and wait in, but there might be some other stuff that I can look at after I'm done getting this Pirate's Hook that I could also knock out while working on my alking goals. Well, I am up to 500 total Agility Arena laps, and I feel like I have barely even made a dent into my alkables so far. We're just over 300 tickets, and I did bank and get my Karamja gloves because I really felt like I wasn't getting any double tickets for a while, so I just went and grabbed those in case I needed to have them with me. Also, I did find this really funny, like, visual glitch. If you alk and then run through the room where you're supposed to do this whole Matrix thing, your guy just kind of stands there and lets the darts just fly right through him, like a freaking ghost. Weirdly enough, the motivation is now at an all-time high to get this done, because as you can see down here, I have 705 tickets. And I've been here for like a day or two now, so I actually don't exactly remember. I'm pretty sure it was 800 tickets for the Pirate's Hook. It's probably been like two minutes for you guys. It's been like uh, 10 hours or something for me. <laughs> In traditional RuneScape fashion, the last ticket that I need is, of course, nearly as far away as it possibly can be from the exit. But there we go, 800 Agility Arena tickets. Let's get the hell out of here and buy that absolutely, completely pointless cosmetic item. This is the dumbest purchase that I've probably ever made, but there we go. <laughs> There's not even a confirmation message. The Pirate's Hook. 800 Grimhaven Agility Arena tickets for a mighty item. It's worth 3.7 mil, actually. That's that's actually really not bad. That's a decent that's a decent value, but considering it takes like 10 plus hours to get, it's obviously really not good, and it's probably more profitable just to get Marks of Grace. But we have it now, so the best part about this is I can now go to my collection log, go to mm, other minigames? I don't, I don't really know what this is considered. I guess it's a minigame. The Brimhaven Agility Arena is now 8 out of 8, Fully completed, absolutely beautiful. You love seeing green logs filled out. I do still have an absolute ton of uh, air battle staff though, and I didn't even get anywhere near as many done as I was hoping for. So I think what I'm going to have to do now is just start heading to the shops, and if I have a large stack of them left over after I've sold off everything else for my Alk tab, I'll probably just find another activity to do with it if there's anything that's proactive to do while Alking. Now, Dave, what are you doing in the rogue's den? Well, this is where I plan on selling my items. There used to be a way to actually sell these on the shop on Karamja over here for above high alk value, but I'm pretty sure that was removed from the game quite some time ago because people were abusing the absolute hell out of it, so it's not really a thing anymore. But over here at the rogue's den, I can actually sell the first item on every world for alk value. So as you see, the shop will buy for 4680, and if I examine it, it high elks for 4,680. Now, the only downside to this is, obviously as I sell them, they become worth a little bit less. And ideally, I wanna be selling, I think five per world seems ideal. So I start to lose maybe like 10% of what the elk would actually be worth, which is gonna add up a decent bit. But honestly, this is going to save me probably 50 or 60 hours by doing it this way. So probably worth it. Okay, it's probably not going to save me 60 hours, but it's going to save me like at least 20 to 30. It's still going to take a long time to sell stuff, and I could technically sell one of everything per world. I'm not sure exactly how many I'm going to do yet. I'll figure that out as I start going along here. Alright, you know what? Just because I want to optimize the amount of money I'm making, it's going to add probably a handful of hours, but it's probably still worth it to do it this way. I'm just going to sell two or three per world, 
it's going to add numerous clicks because uh, the menu entry swapper, if I hold shift here, you can see the option changes to cell 5. The other alternative option is cell 1. Uh, there is no cell X, so I have to do like two of every item like this, which is going to be, I guess, a little annoying, but it's not super terrible. As you can see, the money starts to pile up pretty quickly because I'm basically getting just a little bit under ALK value on average for each of these items. And once I sell them all, I just hop worlds, rinse and repeat. And of course, now that I'm looking through the menu entry swapper, I'm realizing I could have in fact left clicked tan all when I was making all of those hides earlier. Ah, hindsight 2020. You guys are probably also thinking, well, this process must be really, really fast, right? I mean, you're selling two items per world, you'll be done in no time. But this is just a live recorded clip, and you can see that it's not insanely fast to sell two of each of these items per world. And uh, I have to hop several thousand worlds. As you can see, I still have 7,000 air at Battle Staff. And even if I'm just stopping when I run out of Onyx Bolts, that's still going to be over 2,000 world hops. And we're going to hit the world hop timer quite a few times here, but I guess I'll come back when that actually happens. And to those of you that have a keen eye and saw these javelin heads in my ALK tab, you probably were wondering why. Well, this is why. The high ALK value on dragon and rune javelin heads is actually much higher than javelins. I don't know why it works like that, but this is going to end up being another over 10 million GP. And since I'm already selling several thousand air battle staff, I figured I might as well start with these now. Well, this is about all that I have left. I say that as if I've gone through a lot, but it's mostly just the big stacks of items at this point. And I'm going down to selling just one of these other items, like the rune items per world, since I'm going to have to hop numerous times anyway, sell two of the higher quantity items, one of the lower, I get a little bit more GP out of it. And even though this is going to save time over alking, I'm definitely going to have RSI. And this is actually a pretty focus intensive process. Amazing title idea. And yes, please listen to the end of this feature me. Uh, even though you're just going to name the title like Iron Comp 30. The Great Alk Scape. You know, like the Great Escape. Okay, man, my dad jokes need some work. Well, apparently you actually can get a too many login attempts thing. I actually didn't know that was possible still. So, interesting. It took like four or five hours for me to get it the first time. So, uh, maybe I'm just going faster than I was earlier. I don't know, because I have less items to sell maybe. Well, since I have to wait for like the cooldown on the hop timer anyway, I was looking around the collection log and then I found the monkey backpack section. Now, if I can alk while doing this, it'll just be similar to the pirate's hook where it's just passive GP gain while also working on collection log slots. I'm gonna try with the Tome of Fire and the Grigri and see if it'll work. I'm not sure, let's go find out. All right, so fun fact, I've immediately realized you just can't cast magic here, so. So much for that idea. Well, back to shop escape, and as you can tell, we're down to just seven items. But there are still very high quantities of these seven items, and I'm actually having to stop and take breaks every, like, hour because I am in genuine pain from doing this. Like, I have to, like, ice my hand. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, maybe I should take a break for a day or two, I don't know. Well, I'm down to just 2,000 air battle staff left, and since it's just one item, I'd rather alk and do combat than shop escape anymore since I've already been there for like 20 plus hours. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the Crawling Hand. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Babe, what the fuck is a Crawling Hand? Well, these are Crawling Hands. But the item in the collection log actually drops from these, and what it is is it's just a 1 in 500 chance, and it's just a trophy item. That's that's really it. So I'm just going to try and get an Alk off between like every shot while I'm killing these things, and hopefully we just see that collection log pop up. This is something I expected to eventually just kind of get passively, but I haven't really done boost slayer in so long and I have so many slayer points right now and need to get so many more tasks through things like Konar and Wilderness Slayer that I'm not even really sure if I'm going to ever need to do boost slayer again. That's probably going to come back to bite me in the ass in a future video, but for now I'm going to stick with that statement. Technically speaking, according to my slayer ring, we're already at 428 kills. So we're really not even that far off the drop rate, just right off the rip. And it'd be really nice to pick this up quickly because I'm sure there's some other random activity that I'll be able to find where I can just kill stuff and hopefully get another free log slot while alking. Oh hey, there we go. Well, 
that was pretty quick. There is the crawling hand, and uh, I think that actually puts me almost exactly on the drop rate for that thing. Probably 10 kilograms for some reason, but hey, it's just a trophy item. It's going to sit in my bank probably forever, but sweet. Originally, I was going to do barrows while alking, but I got way too scared. I was going to accidentally alk a piece of gear by mistake. So we're going to try out AFKing at Czar because I'm still missing pretty much everything in this collection log. So if we can get an item while alking, easy money. Hey, there we go. Finally getting something. I believe that's the Abi Shield. Yes, it is. I've actually killed these things. Oh, I just wasted a prayer potion. I've actually been killing these things for a while. Not just now, but in the past as well. And the, I think, only the second drop that I've had so far. And still no pieces of the Obsidian Armor, which is the super, super rare stuff. So hopefully that RNG just breaks soon and the floodgates just start opening up and we get tons of pieces from here because... This is not exactly the fastest grind in the world, and even though these are burstable, I'd rather not use my runes here, but it's still a good AFK grind, so I guess I don't mind if it takes a little while. Oh my god, would you look at it. This is like over 100, probably closer to 200 hours of prep work and crafting and alking and selling and doing all this activity, and it's done. I have finished alking and selling and making all of the craftables in my bank that are realistic to use. So now here's the fun part. Well now here comes the fun part. I'm genuinely curious how much money you guys think I made from all the stuff you saw me do and all the alkables in my bank. I didn't add anything aside from what you guys saw. I didn't subtract anything aside from what you guys saw. So leave your guesses down below before you watch this part because I am actually curious. I want to see if anyone's going to get close. So what are you guys thinking? Like. Did I get the whole 800? Did I make more? Over a billion GP? 200 mil? Who knows? Well, here's the grand reveal. I made 512 million GP in this video. Half of a billion GP on an Iron Man. And man, it is absolutely insane to see this. My elk tab is just... It's just bone dry at this point. Honestly, I can just remove all these things because I'm not going to get very many more of those. It is just, it's bone dry in here, man. It's empty. This is the first time I've cleaned out this tab in I don't even know how long. I haven't done it since I started the series. And I don't remember the last time I did it before I even quit the account. Now, there is just a slight element of sadness to this because it does mean that I can't actually buy all of the bank slots. But... I can buy 120 of them for 350 million GP. And you guys are sitting here thinking, he's not going to actually do it. He's not going to actually do it. Well, you would be wrong because I just did it. I am going to spend 350 million GP on my Iron Man for some bank slots. Absolutely, we are one step closer to completionism or gold we're almost just done with needing gold for completionist purposes there is one more thing we can purchase and it is going to cost us 500 million more coins to get those last 40 slots but luckily for me we still have 162 mil left we're not that far off i just have to do everything i did in this video and since the creation of this account over again shouldn't be that hard right because I did notice there's a couple things in my bank that I didn't take out when I was doing this. I actually have a couple of the totems over here that I could have taken advantage of. I don't know how much these are worth. Probably like a, a good handful of coins here. I think this is the 8 mil one. So yeah, we have actually another 16 mil just sitting in the bank. Actually, this is going to be more than 16 mil. This is probably 17.5 or 18 mil just sitting here. So, hey, that's a good start. I really hope you guys end up enjoying this episode. It is definitely far from the norm and far from anything you will ever see happening very often on this series. Technically, it can only happen one more time. But it's completionism, and even though it's not all collection log oriented, this is one of the biggest, coolest goals that I was really excited for when I started this series. Doing things like this that just, if we're being honest, very few, if any other Iron Men are doing, that's been my goal. I want people to look at this account and honestly just say, what the hell is wrong with this guy? And I guarantee by the end of this video, some of you guys have probably done that. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see me unlock those last 40 bank slots, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. 
leave a comment down below if you haven't already, and of course, like the video so that I can get boosted in the YouTube algorithm. It really does help a lot more than you guys think. Peace out, and have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time.